Our next presenter is Charles Sharkey, whose three-minute thesis title is Using Confined Bubble Flow to Construct Designer Foams. Imagine opening a can of soda. Soon after you snap open the top and try and drink from it, you're going to be greeted by a flurry of bubbles. For better or for worse, though, their existence is fleeting, because the bubbles are going to rise to the surface and burst. But what if I can tell you there are bubbles that can actually persist for months? What you're looking at behind me are air bubbles. This may be a little bit strange and surprising, since we generally expect air bubbles to be spherical. Take, for example, children blowing bubbles in a park. Every time one of them dips a wand into the soapy solution and blows a bubble, it's always going to be spherical and delicate. My research is focused on producing rigid, non-spherical bubbles. The secret to doing this is in the liquid I use and the process I use to make these bubbles. Instead of using a bottle of soapy water the kids will buy at a pharmacy or a toy store, I use a suspension of nanoparticles. These particles are special, though. On the surface, they're coated with soap-like molecules. Instead of using a wand, I use a long, narrow capillary tube that's filled with the suspension of these particles. As a bubble flows along the length of the tube, the particles will stick to the surface, and I have found they actually form a rigid layer. This is important because this rigid layer on the surface of the bubble gives it the ability to take on these cool non-spherical shapes when it exits the tube. I can control the bubble's shape and also its mechanical properties by varying different parameters, like how fast it moves through the tube or even the concentration of the suspension. I can also do this with different types of particles, making this a pretty versatile process. However, to utilize the full potential of these bubbles, we need to think big. I'm talking about larger collections of them, or foams. Foams can be made of simple soap bubbles, like when you're washing the dishes, or they can be made of bubbles coated with particles, similar to what I use. Now, these foams that are made of particle-coated bubbles are actually pretty important, because they can be turned into porous ceramics. The ceramics are made in a way such that those bubbles in the starting foam end up becoming the pores in the final ceramic, and can affect its mechanical properties. My bubbles in my process could provide a way to tune the mechanical properties of that ceramic by controlling the bubble shape in the initial foam. These designer foams that I'm working to produce could potentially lead to a new class of lightweight materials with applications ranging from ballistic protection to even heat shielding on spacecraft. Thank you.